Hello and welcome back. This is episode 40 of the first person shooter tutorial series. Um, I can't believe we're already on episode 40. It's kind of crazy. Um, this is... Um, I I've published about 50 videos now on YouTube, so I'm still pretty early on in my channel. Um, I'm already up to 2,000 views and 14 subscribers. Hopefully by the time you see this, there are much larger numbers. Um, but yeah, th this has been a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. I hope you guys are excited, as excited about this series as I am. Um, so thank you for being a part of it. Uh, where was I? So in the last episode, we finished off with um, creating some random spawning. And we noticed that the nav mesh wasn't correctly baked. So go ahead and leave play mode. And we, we bake the nav mesh. And once that finishes, um, yeah, there we go. Now, now the the weird carved out areas are fixed. And I think I'm just going to create some more spawn points. Uh, move these behind the rock. Put one over here. Put one out here. Uh, if you want to go into top view, you can click on this Y green arrow. And then you just want to make sure that the spawn points aren't below the ground. Um, usually it does a pretty good job snapping the characters to the nav mesh. Um, but you just, you don't want them to fall through the ground. And it could also pause your game and give you an arrow that says... Uh, enemy must be placed on nav mesh, something like that. So just try to get it fairly close. I'm just going to create a bunch of spawn points. Like that. And if you want to snap between close view and far view, uh, you can click on the terrain and hit F. That'll zoom you out. And then you can click on one of these, Control D to duplicate, and then F to zoom in on that. Back to the terrain. F. And I'm using right click to pan, middle mouse to drag, and then left click and drag to reposition. Alright, so now we've got a bunch of spawn points. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save the game. And now we want to make sure we're spawning a bunch more enemies in the wave manager. And all we have to do to spawn enemies now is just this one line of code. Spawn enemies, parenthesis, semicolon. So in wave 1 we spawn 2 enemies. In wave 2 we could spawn 4 enemies. And... Uh, just to make it easy for ourselves, we're going to create a for loop. int i equals 0, i is less than, um, let's say 6. And call spawn enemy one time in that. And now what this is going to do, it's, um, if you've never written a for loop before, i is the incrementing value, so it's going to start off at 0. And then it's going to keep looping as long as i is less than 6. And then after the loop, it's going to increase i by 1. So if, essentially, these four lines of code create 6 enemies. We'll do the same thing here with 7. eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, and I think at some point there's just going to be way too many for the player, 15, 20, and 30. Alright, so so once we get up to wave 12, there's going to be 30 enemies pointing in toward the player. 
Um, we also need to make sure that we have 30 spawn points. And I'm lazy, so I'm just going to take these 10, hit Control D, and then drag them a little bit. There. So now we have 20. Control D one more time. That'll give us 30. And just drag them a little bit. And some of them are kind of like a little bit through the ground. Uh, so if if we want to, we can touch that up. But I, but I think it I think they're close enough that it shouldn't give us any problems. Yeah, that looks fine. All right. So now we can go into play mode. Wave one. Reload. Oh, all right. So it's it's not starting wave two, and that's because we're we're not actually tracking the amount of enemies yet. So to do that, um, we need to change our, our spawning function. So right here, when we spawn the enemy, um, we need to do game object enemy equals game object as game object and so now now we have a reference to the enemy we just spawned and we're just going to add that to our enemy list enemy list add enemy and we'll just copy that and put the exact same thing here so if we find a spawn point on the first try we create an enemy and add that to our list. If the first spawn point we checked was not clear, um, we haven't spawned an enemy yet, so we're going to go into this loop, and eventually we're going to spawn an enemy and drop out of the loop. You know, I really don't like that, because once all the spawn points... like If there was ever a condition where all the spawn points filled up, this could theoretically crash the game, because it's just going to get stuck in this loop forever. So... Instead, if spawn point check clear, if, if if the random spawn point that we selected has an enemy in it, we're just going to say else uh, invoke spawn enemy. And we can wait, I don't know, like half a second or, or one fifth of a second. Um, so that way, uh, no matter what, the, the game is never going to crash. If, if, we, if we try to spawn... 30 enemies at the same time, or let's say we're trying to spawn 31 enemies, all of these are going to fill up, and then it's going to keep trying, but for the 31th try, it's going to wait 0.2 seconds, and then it's going to run through all of them again. Or, uh, yeah, it, it's... The, the, this will fix our problem. I mean, it, it's not going to go in a linear fashion, but it's it's randomly going to select them, and if it, if it hits one that's not clear, it's going to wait, and then randomly grab another one. So now now we're spawning the enemies and we're adding them to our list. And then we, we want to call another wave as soon as this, uh, this, where'd it go? The, <laughs> as soon as this enemy list is empty, we need to call the next wave. So we could listen for that in the update function. We could just check the count every single frame. Or we could wait until an enemy actually dies, and then we could signal to this that an enemy died and check there. Um, we're going to do that because that way we're not um, doing extra calculations every single frame. So create a public void um, remove. Actually, yeah, okay, well, signal death is what we'll do. And now that I think about it, this 
uh, this list of enemies is not typecast. So it's just a, it's a list of generic objects, which which makes our work a little bit harder. Because now when an enemy dies, they're still in the scene. Uh, but they're just like crumpled up on the floor. So why don't we make this easier on ourselves? Um, we will actually check in the update function the number of enemies in enemy list. So void update if enemy list dot count is equal to zero. We're going to change wave and uh, we need a wave value. So public, uh, I'll make that private. Private int wave and whenever we change the wave This dot wave equals the new wave value. So now th this global wave variable um, tells us what wave we're currently on. And so now when we want to change the wave, we can just say wave plus one. Like that. Um, but the way our game is set up right now, this this is never going to be true. We're never going to have an empty. And we're never going to have an empty enemy list because we're not actually destroying the enemies when they die. So so we need to remove the enemies from our list when they die, and so to do that we can have public void signal death, and that's just going to expect a game object dead enemy like that now I think we might have some pro some problems because this is a generic list so we might have to change that um, for now I'm just gonna forge ahead and see what happens so control shift T E N E to open the enemy health and when this guy dies, we want to signal to the wave manager that he has died. So we have a we have a piece here where his health is less than one. And let's just create a separate method for that. So void die now. Die now, and we need, we need to make sure we don't call it die because die is is the is the function that we're broadcasting. So if you call it die and then broadcast die within that, it's just going to loop back on itself. Wave manager dot instance dot signal death. This dot game object. So now we're telling the wave manager that we've died. And I think we should probably eventually hide the body. So we can say void destroy game object capital O. And we'll invoke that. Invoke destroy game object after 10 seconds. Destroy game object. And now, when we signal death, we need to go through this list and remove the specific game object. So, I think uh, hopefully, we can just say remove dead enemy 
We'll see what happens. And to see if that works, we're going to print the size of the array. So go into play mode, uh, and it broke out. It broke already. No reference exception. Wave manager update. Oh, and that's because we have not created the new enemy list. All right, so we have two enemies. Four enemies. Why do we have four enemies? Ah, oh, this is frustrating. So, now the reason that happened is because in update, we started off with a count of zero, and it just, it automatically changed the wave to wave two. So we got all the enemies from wave one and all the enemies from wave two. I think. But let's just see what happens. Yeah, so automatically we're at wave two. We can fix that later. All right, so we killed that guy, and it printed seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there were eight, and we got rid of one, so there's seven left. So that makes sense. Resume. Reload. Die. Killed him. And now you can see we have six. So that's great. It, it is correctly removing the enemies from the list. Uh, we just need to make sure that we don't automatically spawn wave 2 at the beginning. Now to fix that, we could we could do a few things. Um, I'm just going to have a boolean value private bool has started equals false. And then in start game has started equals true. And in update only change the wave if has started is true. So this so this this won't happen until after we summon the first wave. I think that'll be enough to fix it. Wave one Pause the scene. We have two characters. Killed one. Killed another one, and wave two starts. All right. Wave three. All right, I think we're off to a pretty great start. Um, I'm gonna cut this video off here. Um, I think that wraps up the whole spawning system. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.